Uh, did I ever tell you I'm horrible at introing videos? That's right. I suck at this. And you know what? We're just going to skip it. We're going to skip the intro. We're just going to go right to the build because today is the final part of the giant 3D printed Gundam build series. And that is my favorite part of the build series, the part where we build it. Six foot tall, one tenth scale, 378 3D printed part RX-78-2 giant Gundam. The stand is here. The walls are freshly painted. It's echoey as heck because there's nothing else in the studio. Sound good? Let's get started. Okay, so I may be actually jumping the gun a little bit here. Before we get to assembling the big blurry out of focus guy in the background here, we need to finish putting together some final components. That includes the backpack, the legs, and the waist. And we did this on live stream, so I'm gonna be showing you some footage from that. But like all components for assembling the giant Gundam, we have PETG 3D printed parts. Everything's kind of held together with a mixture of 3D gloop adhesive, along with some blue tape for shimming up the joints to ensure that everything moves kind of the way we want it to move, not too tight, not too loose. One tip, I don't know if I mentioned this in the previous videos in the series, clamps. Get yourself a lot of clamps. The more clamps, the better. You don't need crazy expensive strong clamps. You're, you're gluing together 3D printed parts, it's plastic. But you, you're gonna want some clamps because it, it just makes the assembly of this so much easier when everything's setting up. Because while 3D Gloop does glue up pretty quickly, you are gonna wanna hold things in position until they finally set. So with that out of the way, we have all the final components ready for the big assembly of the Gundam. So let's get that thing built. So the fun part about this build is I've never actually put it together uh, at all yet. I've done some test fits of some smaller components, but I haven't actually done like a final assembly build. So while I'm putting this together, I'm gonna be weighing the parts for it so we can get a final total weight. I know roughly how much it weighs based on uh, what my the statistics from my printers that I've been using, but scrap parts, uh, support, the errors in slicing software, we're, we're gonna get a final weight using actual scales. Now, this is a giant project and it's gonna weigh a lot and moving it around once it's fully assembled, uh, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. So the whole idea while I was building this, while there are components that are permanently attached, there are quite a few components that are permanently attached, it is still assembled in multiple components. So the legs and the waist is one part, each individual foot is one part. To help support this giant assembly, uh, we do have a stand made out of some 3D printed parts that attach to the Gundam along with some pipes to kind of lock everything in place. Now, when you are doing a big project with 3D printers, it, it's helpful to have 3D printers, especially printers that are capable of doing stuff more than just printing plastic. But what do you do if, if you lack printers to do that because 3D printing metal, that's that's kind of hard. Not everyone could do that, but you know who can do that? Today's video sponsor, PCBWay. So if you need something 3D printed in metal, nylon, or heck right now they have a big sale on with TPU prints. The more you get, the more you save. And it's not just 3D printed parts they offer. They also offer PCB manufacturing and even CNC services right now. So check them out in the link in the video description. And again, cheers for sponsoring today's video. Some components like the torso here are ball jointed. So once it snaps together, there is a little bit of friction to hold it in place, but mostly gravity. But this does give us the ability to pose. In fact, quite a few of the joints in here are still fully movable. We have leg joints, knee joints, waist joints. Uh, it's, it's surprisingly the mobile. This thing can sit down. Now, while this is quite large and quite heavy, uh, there is a stand that's made out of 3D printed components and piping that does all help keep it vertical. Uh, this is the first time I'm putting it together with the stand, so hopefully it works pretty good. And it's pretty cool. Uh, some of these components, even though they do slot together, I've gone ahead and added magnets. So while they are friction fit, they're also kind of mechanically locked in place because magnets are awesome for stuff like this. Go. So for the arms, they just kind of hang on the side. It, it, I'm kind of disappointed. There is quite a bit of movement to these and I wish there was more posability, but because of the weight of these components, uh, each one of these arms weighs just under three kilograms each. While they will kind of hold a position, they do eventually just droop down. So we're just gonna kind of have them 
slotted in for now and just kind of hanging. And uh, maybe in the future, I'll rig up some sort of skeleton system or something to kind of get a little bit more out of it. But for now, a sort of just kind of standing at the ready pose will do. Do the hands right? Yeah, the hands match. There we go. And then we have some individual leg armor parts here that we need to put on. Let's see here, I think these guys go in the front. And these parts are just friction fit, just kind of held on. We have our beam sabers. There we go. Move those kind of into a, whatever position you're happy with. That's good. We have a bucket of waist armor slats we have to put on now. There we go. And last but not least, and most importantly, we have the head. Now the head of this Gundam is pretty cool because we do have some LEDs in here powered by a rechargeable battery. So the lights light up and the little, uh, I don't know what that part's called, but this part that's red lights up red. And this just sits on again with a ball joint. So we do have a little bit of posability, mobility. We can look down, we can look up. There we go. For the first time, that is the fully assembled, one tenth scale, fully 3D printed RX-78-2 Gundam in the Pet G. This was fun. <laughs> and this looks awesome. This thing looks absolutely awesome. It's a giant Gundam. In fact, it, it's, it's taller than me. I'm five foot nine. And uh, on paper, this should be about 190 centimeters tall. I, I don't know if that's the top of the head or the top of the V antenna, but it's 190 centimeters tall. And it is, it's got some bulk to it. It's got a bit of weight to it. So let's go on a little tangent right now because I got my little cheat sheet here of numbers to go over what exactly goes into a giant 3D printed Gundam. Files, parts, 378. 3D printed parts that had to be printed and not just at 100% scale, 200% scale because we're printing this at 1 10th scale, not 1 20th scale. And that means filament. There's quite a bit of it. So I do want to give a shout out at this time to Prusa 3D for sponsoring the filament for this build series. It's all printed in Prusa Mint, Pet G or Buddy 3D Pet G. The colors for those wondering, Signal White Prusa Mint, Anthracite Gray Prusa Mint, and then we do have Carbon Fiber Black Pet G Prusa Mint as well. For the Buddy 3D filament, we have uh, blue, yellow, and red. Those colors have really cool names. Uh, so those are the six colors that were used for the Gundam. And we used quite a bit of filament. In total, uh, according to the specs on all my printers, we printed about 51 kilograms of pet g for this build now not all of that was pet g um i think the slicer can't really tell when you're using pla supports it counts it as pet g but we printed 51 kilograms of filament for this build and the breakdowns for those wondering proof the mark 4s this printed 10.2 kilograms of filament total over 528 hours i mostly use this printer with its hardened nozzle to print some of the bigger blockier parts at a cf pet g so it got actually more print time on this than the core ones the Prusa XL. This thing was an absolute workhorse for this build. And right now, unfortunately, it's not plugged in because I'm moving stuff around in the studio. But it printed a total of 22.7 kilograms of filament over 941 hours. So, so this came in really handy for some of the larger parts. You know, at 200% scale, most parts actually did fit on normal printer size beds. Uh, some parts were just so big, only the XL can fit them. And also it came in really clutch printing parts that required uh, a lot of support material. So I did PLA supports with PETG parts for that easy support material as well. And then we have the Prusa Core 1. So Core 1 1 here uh, printed a total of 9.7 kilograms of filament over 442 hours. And then Core 1 2 uh, printed a total of 8.4 kilograms of filament over 437 hours. So the Core 1s, they printed mostly smaller parts and anything more highly detailed that while it did require support, I could get by with using just Pet G supports with Pet G parts. So the Core 1s actually 
individually did the least amount of work, but combined did almost as much work as the XL. So again, they came in really handy. All the Prusa printers that I use, uh, except for this guy, uh, worked pretty much flawlessly. Um, I did have a couple hangups with parts, uh, warping issues, um, some areas, some prints, I forgot to paint on supports in certain areas. So really the only issues that cropped up during printing were issues that I'll just say are printer agnostic. They, they could have happened to any printer. And as for this Mark IV, well, what happened with it was I started using it at the beginning of this uh, build series to print parts as well. So I had five printers going, but um, a couple plates in this started happening. I was printing in the garage here during a really hot summer. This printer originally had PETG parts and the belts just kind of they, they went. Stuff that was tight was no longer tight, which means stuff started drifting and, and yeah, not good. So this printer ended up getting rebuilt, but this printer really didn't do much of the build series, maybe one or two plates of parts. So we have a total of 2,348 hours of print time and 51 kilograms of filament total. And you can see from this stack of empty spools, uh, there's, there's quite a bit of filament, but the Gundam, it weighs 38.5 kilograms, including the, the stand. It's 38.5 kilograms, about 85 pounds total for those that live in Wales per football field units of measurement. And uh, where'd the rest of the filament go? So here's the conundrum. If the total amount of filament printed is this value, and the total amount of filament that actually is part of the Gundam is this value, what happened to the filament in the middle? Where did it go? Well, it just didn't disipperate, disapparate, just dis dis dissolve, disappear. It's waste. It is an entire bin of support material. Uh, this entire uh, 3D printed garbage bin is filled with support. It's mostly PETG. There is quite a bit of PLA as well from the XL support. And it's over six, maybe seven kilograms of support material total. And this isn't all of it. Uh, some of this waste, I, I only started collecting the support waste um, a couple days into the project. Not all of it made it to the bin. Some of it just ended up getting thrown out. So there was quite a bit of waste to this project. And here's the conundrum. This is all unorganized, unsorted, unlabeled. My local recycling center won't take this. It, it's unlabeled. It's not the type of plastic they recycle normally. It, it's cross-contaminated with different filaments of different types. And, you know, it's some's PLA, some's PLA plus, some PLA plus, who, who knows? It, I even might have some PVA or PHA in here um, and maybe some ABS as well. So here's the conundrum and let me know in the comments below, what should I do with six or seven kilograms of scrap mixed plastic? Let me know, comments below. So yeah, this was a fun project. Also at this time, I do want to give a shout out to 3D Gloop for their adhesive that's holding a lot of this Gundam together. It's working great so far. So they did send over some bottles of Gloop to help with this build. So you can check those companies out that supported this entire build series in the links in the video description. Affiliate links don't cost you anything extra. Go a long way in supporting the channel. But now that it's done, what next? Well, I said it earlier in the video, this is coming with me to 3D Printopia at the end of this month. I'm gonna have to figure out how to put it in my car and drive it the eight or nine hours down to Maryland to display there. So um, I might actually just put it in the passenger seat, have it ride shotgun. That, that actually might be the best way to transport this. Although I'll probably get some weird looks at the border. That should be interesting. But yeah, this is gonna be in the background of the new studio. Uh, this is the currently in progress rework of the basement studio. And this will be front and center in the background because when you have a six foot tall giant Gundam that's bigger than you are, you kind of want to show it off, right? I hope you enjoyed this build series. It was super fun. Um, I learned a lot and this, this is the biggest project I've ever done in 3D printing so far. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you wanna see more cool stuff like this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, ring the bell, get the notifications, like the smash button, do all that stuff because you know, YouTube and algorithms and whatnot, everything's changing. So any support that you give to the channel helps out greatly. And if you wanna help out that little bit more, consider becoming a channel member or a Patreon supporter. Links for that in the video description as well. I'm Taylor, the Canuck creator. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the future. Cheers.